We're joined in studio this morning by Caddo Commissioner John Atkins, who, um, you know, sometimes I don't have a life. And so I was watching the Caddo Commission <laughs> meeting on, on the public channel last week. And they were talking about the Alice report, the uh, Bruce and the folks were up there from Bruce Wilson from United United Way. Way. And you kind of, you know, you're very quiet. You don't you don't say a whole lot. You kind of listen. But then you said something about things we can do to address poverty and the problems facing our community. And you have three rules. And that's where I want to start. Explain your three rules. Well, thank you, Aaron. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Robert. I appreciate you all having me today. Those rules are not my rules. Uh, and let me just back up and set a little context. You bet, I please. Um, the United Way team was there presenting the results of their ALICE report. And the ALICE report assesses poverty levels and ALICE levels in our community. And ALICE stands for Asset Limited Income Constrained Employed People. So it's kind of the... Um, the first economic tier up from poverty, the people that may be one or two paychecks away from being in poverty. Mm -hmm. So the United Way measures that and tracks those levels. And as you all know, those levels are fairly high in our communities. Sure. Uh, I don't think any of us that are involved in government service or public information right. or a nonprofit are surprised that those numbers are, are, are fairly high in our community because we see um, every day we see indications of poverty and increasing poverty. Um, through the increased levels of spending in our in our government budgets and the increased levels of spending in our nonprofit budgets on any number of social services, such as um, housing, uh, child care, early childhood education, mm -hmm. the uh, the continued investments into Caddo Parish schools to provide services other than just education, and then. At the Cato Parish Commission level, we see it at the juvenile detention and juvenile justice level. So it's um, it's a pervasive issue, or these are pervasive issues in our community. And you said something about the programs we should be focusing on funding should try to go after your three goals, I guess right. it was. Well, so... So these, all these issues that we just talked about, all these social service requirements that have been growing, those in my view in the view of many, many others as well, are, um, they're the symptoms. Mm -hmm. They're the symptoms of a larger problem that's, that's spread across our whole community. I'm not talking about any particular demographic here. I'm talking about our whole community. But I think the root problem, which we need to be acknowledging is, is that many of these social challenges are due to the fact that too many young people are having children before they're prepared to raise those children. And, and I believe that's the root cause of many of our many of our social problems, many of our um, socioeconomic challenges. So, um, and yet, on a national scale, there's 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 not that anti-smoking campaign equivalent, or wear a seatbelt or shoulder harness equivalent targeted at say fifth, sixth graders through high school saying. Look, if you're a kid and you have a kid, it's probably going to screw your life up. Well, you're exactly right, Rob. You're exactly right, Robert. And I would love to see a, a no smoking campaign or a seatbelt campaign or something on the national level that addresses those issues. Because, because but that it, would involve abstinence. And that goes against not to not to paint with a broad brush. <laughs> but that goes against the entire left wing template of 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 what you should. That makes moral choices. And you can't do that in 21st century America. Well, I'm not even judging people morally. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I'm not putting, I, I live in a, uh, a home that has plenty of glass in it. Uh, so I'm not trying to say that I'm a, I'm a saint. Um, but I think just from, I'm not looking at this from a moralistic standpoint as I am so much an economic standpoint and a rational standpoint. I mean, the, um, the message that, comes out of the Brookings Institute study and the Manhattan Institute study are these three points that you mm -hmm. that, that, that I made a reference to uh, in the in the Cato Parish Commission. Repeat and the, those, by the way, if that, someone missed them, because yes. Aaron said, oh, my God, it was like Robert was talking to mm -hmm. me. <laughs> well, uh, first of all, um, the Brookings Institute indicates that there's a 98 percent chance that one can find themselves no longer in poverty if they follow three um, key rules. First, 
get your education. And, and in the case of the Brookings Institute study, I believe it was just a, a, a college degree. Mm -hmm. Get your education. Then get a job, a full-time job. It doesn't specify exactly what kind of job. They say any full-time job will, pr will provide the foundation from which you can grow. Uh, so that's one and two. Only then uh, get a spouse. And, and fourthly, if you feel so inclined, have a child, but only after you're 21 years old. So get your education, get your employment, get your spouse, and then have a child after 21. And it's assumed that that case, if you've had, if you follow those other three rules, you'll be financially stable enough to actually support that child and raise that child in a way that will be rewarding to both you and that child. And your goal as a Caddo commissioner, <clears throat> your message seemed to be, we should be funding programs that target those areas. Is that is that kind of what I was hearing? Well, um, I think that we'll, we we will have this will be a long term mm -hmm. approach, and uh, you know that this national campaign, if we were to get one going, would certainly take a long term to see the results of it. So we will have the needs. Don't see Pelosi and Schumer jumping on that train. <laughs> well, you're 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 right about that. But so there will be plenty of needs, continued needs to provide the support that we've been that we're currently providing but we must recognize the fundamental issue here and we must get ahead of it and start addressing it through a, a campaign of some sort an educational campaign we need parents to get involved we need pastors to get involved and we need teachers to get involved we need politicians to get involved all to start this national campaign 